Ja, hej og velkommen. Her er med dere en av meg. Da har gangen slaget klokken to, så da vil jeg ønske velkommen til FHAJ-konsertet her i Kulturhuset med Sverre Sigurdsson Musikkorps. Veldig kjekt at det var så mange som har tatt turen og benyttet seg av 100 kroner super. Det er veldig kjekt. Så jeg skal ikke stå her og si så veldig nøye, annet enn at jeg håper å få en fin konsert og gi ordet til dirigenten vår som heter Paul Farr. Of course. Beklager det så mye, jeg kan ikke snakke om det også. Jeg går på Jokland. Hvis jeg snakker jokland, spiser neste gang ikke. Det er ikke det. 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 Um, and what the, he was a bit of a swindler, a bit of a, a wheeler dealer sort of person. And he thought, what this band needs is a, what this town needs is a band. 
a really fantastic wind band. And everybody's a bit sceptical. He says, we, we, can't, we can't do this because we're not musical. He said, yes, of course you are. Can you say ice cream? And he said, yes. So, what happened? This is what happened. <laughs> ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. So immediately they had the form. <laughs> This is from the musical, uh, 76 Trombones. It's a bit of a mixture of another famous American uh, march, which I'm sure you recognize about, by Meredith Whit Wilson. So we move on to another story now. Lots of, lots of music tell stories. And this is, this is a story about Alloway Tales. It's called Alloway Tales. In, Alloway is in Ayrshire, in Scotland. And this tells the story of a, of a man called Duncan Gray. Who, 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 it's, it's actually Robin Burns' poem. Um, it's a selection of his poems put together. It's a bit of a, it's quite nicely timed really because it's Valentine's Day yesterday. It, uh, it, it, it tells a love story of, of Duncan Gray who rides into a village on his horse. <laughs> okay, and the idea of this, so what I want you to do is well, while we're playing this music, see if you can listen to the, for these particular points. So first thing you have to find is the horse and then he, he, he starts to to woo, that's a really good Scottish word, woo, to talk to and chat up a young lady uh, uh, called Maggie. And um, it won't be long before they actually fall in love, which is so romantic. And there's going to be a wedding day, so if you listen, you'll be able to hear the wedding day. Oh, everything's happy, they get married. And then they, they think they'll go for a little walk by the stream. So if you can imagine a real Scottish scene with some lovely mountains, actually it's a bit similar to Norway, isn't it? It's so beautiful with all the mountains. And there's a lovely stream just rippling over the little pebbles and the stones. So, so the softer part, before we hear after water, that's the name of the, of the song, you'll hear the, the water trickling over the stones. fall asleep. <laughs> Nicely married. But when they wake up they think what we'll do, we'll go into the village. And, uh, and the worst thing possible has happened since they've been away and got married and had a little sleep by after water. But the village has been uh, taken over by a devil and, it, and it's absolutely really horrible and they, no, nobody can, knows what to do. So they have to get the excise man in and play, and, uh, play the tune Diazire from the, 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 the math. The, the mass which is actually the day of wrath, is Latin for, Dizior is Latin. So you'll hear the, the Dizire eh, trying to get the devil out of the village. <laughs> does the trick because the, the devil leaves the village and then they say well that's all all's, all's going to be great now so let's have a party so everybody ends up having a party and a really nice time so this is what this is the ending when they're having a party <laughs> This is, this is Alloway Tales, it's written by Peter Graham, and uh, it tells the story of Duncan courting Maggie. So I hope you can enjoy this, it's not a very long piece, but if you listen, listen out for these points, you've got to hear the, the horse, and the trickling of the water, and the deer and the party. So, hope you enjoy it.
associated with America, but in fact it was actually written in, in England uh, in about 1720 or something like that. But it was a, a sort of been adopted by um, the Scots, so as we're in Scotland up in Alloway Tales. As, and so you, you can imagine uh, the bagpipes walking around Edinburgh and Crass and Ray on this thing. So uh, there's a very, very clever arrangement by uh, William Himes, which I, which I sort of arranged for wind band. Oh, 20 years ago or so, 25 years ago. And I'd like to play this to, to, to today. This, is, this first of all conjures up all the music, so they've all got stories to them. So what you have to sort of just close your eyes and imagine a sort of a fog over, over a nice Scottish lock. And then suddenly the sun comes up and it's a lovely day. So this is an arrangement of Amazing Grace. <laughs>
didn't disturb her, I left the microphone off. So we're very lucky in the band to have some young people, as you see, which is always good to see people coming up to the band. And one of our stars is Sebastian on percussion, and he's going to step forward and play a very famous, uh, come on Sebastian, <laughs> a very famous xylophone solo called Circus Rems. It's written for full orchestra, a wind band, brass bands and everything. So this is by Gustav Petter, and this is Sebastian. name in the, in the jazz band world. He's, uh, he's very famous for playing not just a high note on the trumpet but super super high notes and one of the reasons why this is a bit, it's a bit of a sad story really because when he was very young he was in a bar and, and had, a, had a bottle of beer actually broken into his mouth so he had all his, lost all his teeth and he had them all screwed back in again so his, his face was all but anyway it's, it, 
probably helped him play quite the high notes. But if you, if you hear uh, any of the big bands from the 60s and 70s, with Stan Kent and all sorts of things, and you hear this ultra super trumpet player playing really high, that's usually Maynard. And uh, my, my brother, he's a, a trumpet player as well. When, when, we, when he was living in Birmingham, uh, Maynard Ferguson's band was doing a concert. And uh, Ray was, we were, we were staying overnight uh, in the flat, uh, which was rented from, an, from another trumpet player who was playing in Maynard's band. And a knock came on the door, you see. And so we entered the door, and there was Maynard Ferguson, this absolute god of trumpet player. And he sort of said, I mean, you know, he's from Canada, well, I, can't, I can't do that. <laughs> anyway, he, we, he welcomed him. We had a lovely evening together. And uh, he actually sadly died in 2006. But, but I have fond memories of meeting him that one evening. He was a real gentleman, a really nice guy. So this is Maynard Ferguson's Gospel John. Um, it, it, it is a comp composition. And this gives the opportunity to our saxophone players to have a bit of improvisation. Now, it's the first time that they've done this, so, so we have to uh, support them a little bit. So this is Gospel John. And it's arranged by well, he's another really good name. Now, I should be able to say this because I had his daughter as a student for many years. Idar <laughs> Tuskengapol. <laughs>
birthday in the Stavanger Symphony Orchestra, and uh, one of my favourite moments of, uh, of the year when I play is if we have a visit from Uri Edward Anderson, because he is, I don't know whether you've heard of him, but he, he is the world's, well, one of the world's greatest trumpet players. He is just absolutely fantastic, and uh, he comes from the, from the brass band world, and uh, went into the Oslo Philharmonic Orchestra. And I remember when I first moved uh, to, to Norway, I turned the television on, and him and his brother were on this sort of talent program. And they were playing a really difficult cornet solo called um, the Carnival of Venice. And Uli Edward was playing the trumpet and holding it, and his brother was doing the fingerings, and it was the most fantastic I've ever seen. And, and anyway, he's, he's since, since left the Oslo Orchestra and uh, gone privately doing soloists everywhere. And he made an, an album um, of trumpet solos, of his trumpet solos. And um, one of them, one of the one of the tracks on them is called Vida. And, and this shows um, uh, it's supposed to describe Hadanga Vida. And and to to get the, to, to sell this VD, this this video, he actually persuaded the Norwegian Royal Air Force <coughs> to take him for a ride in an aeroplane, in, in in a jet fighter. And so if you look, if you go on YouTube, if you're on, if you're sort of a computer, a little bit computer, seven, you can do that. And just go in and, and watch him, because it's fantastic, because he sits in the back of this, this airplane, and it looks, it, look, it looks like he's actually driving it, but he's not, actually. He's not, he's not actually the pilot. But anyway, it looks like he's doing it. And then when he comes off, he takes his mask off. But it, anyway, you see him flying over all this beautiful landscape of, uh, of Vida, and, and it's just really wonderful. So this is a trumpet uh, solo which he's written. And uh, uh, today is a special thing. Uh, we're not just having one trumpet, I'm having all the trumpets in the cornets to play this. So this is Vida by Uli Edward Anderton.
So, we come to our, our last piece for the day. Unless you clap really well at the end. I mean, I just have a tree. That's funny. When I, first, when I first moved to Norway, uh, one of my bands that I got was a little band in Fisco, in North, 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 North Strand, it was called. And uh, it was quite a, quite a country band, actually. And just like five minutes before the rehearsal, there was nobody there. And then suddenly, from every direction, in, in, uh, on, on uh, tractors and all sorts of things, these kids would suddenly arrive, you know. And suddenly there was a band of 40 people, 40 kids there. And two of them, I remember, were, were particularly lively. They used to sort of get up from the band and jump out of the window, and they just couldn't control them at all. <laughs> Complete monsters they were. But they, but they, they, they turned up, and, uh, and then they both actually qualified to be uh, pilots in the, in the, the, the Norwegian um, air, air service. So they actually fly around, these two little little boys who were a little bit naughty. <laughs> they actually fly around our coast and our protectors in, in their jet planes. So anyway, that's another little story to Lena to give the, the band a rest. It was, it was uh, Valentine's Day yesterday, so we're going to finish with a, another uh, very, very romantic thing. This is called Duo Cinema Paradiso. I'm sure you'll all recognize this. This is from 1988. But it's funny that uh, we should rena rename it really because the, the Oscar winner for the best film last week was called Parasite. So it should be Nouveau Cinema Cinemona Parasite. Really well <laughs> anyway. But anyway, the music here is written by uh, Morricone. And you, it may not be a name that you, uh, that you know very well, Morricone, but I'm sure you know the pieces, that, the films that he's written. The Good, the Bad, the Ugly. Um, What's the, the mission, the exorcist? Of course, in the mission, you have that wonderful uh, song called Gabriel's Oboe. So, this is Morricone's, uh, I won't say it again. You know, I'll, I'll try it. You have a cinema parasite. <laughs>